me how to study, this is bullshit. But guess what? Like, he taught me stuff that I didn't even know. And I have to say, what I thought I knew about studying was complete crap. Alright? And he taught me about how to do things better with self-awareness. And as a result, my grades, which was C plus, went up to B plus. I would have got A's, but I got C and missed out. So that sucks. But it's all about self-awareness, right? So more importantly, what are your strengths? What are you good at? You know, look at what you're good at. So Michael Jordan was a freaking natural athlete, right? He was an entertainer. But he was good at. I used to have a slide of, of uh, when I talked about this, I used to talk about Tiger Woods. And I've discovered that he's good at two things now. Golf and some other things. So he's no longer on my list of things to, to use. But when you find out what you're good at, you need to find mastery. You need to become good at something. Alright? So something that you do, you need to become very, very good at. Why? Well, research has shown it takes a hundred hours to learn a skill. So if you want to learn the piano, it's going to take about 100 hours. Alright? So, hmm, summer of code goes to three months. It's roughly 100 hours. Your courses, your semester, how many hours are you expected to do for your course? I bet you if you do the math, you'll find out it's 100 hours. Alright? This is, this is known improvement. It takes about 100 hours to learn something. But, it takes 10,000 hours to master. Right, there's a guy called Malcolm Gladwell, he's got a book called Outliers, and he talks about how it takes 10,000 hours to master something. He actually goes through and details Bill Gates' career and shows you how he became successful because he put in all this work when he was a kid about learning computers and all this sort of stuff. So he had 10,000 hours of mastery. But he uses several cases, a very, very good book. All right? So the first lesson I can give you is find out what your strengths are. Unfortunately, we don't have budget in Summer of Code to give you Strengths Finder, but it's a very, very good book to give you an idea of what you actually do um, and are good at. Cameron, did you get a lot out of it? Yeah, it was good actually, yeah. So, this guy, he, he came along and when we got his strengths from his book, it gave me massive insights to what he was good at. It helped me with him and his job. Right, so he worked for me this summer, or last summer. Right? But it helped me a lot because I knew exactly how he tipped and what actually pushed his buttons. Right? So that helped me as an employer. So it's very, very important to find the stuff. Right? People say, work on your weaknesses. I say bollocks. Right? Think about it. If you work on the stuff that you're really good at, you're going to get a lot more return from that. Right? Because when you work on stuff that you're not so good at, it sucks. Right? So it's better to work on the stuff that you're good at. Number two, what is your passion in IT? Alright, we need to tell, get you to tell us more about yourself because there are plenty of things that suck in computers. Bill Gates has given us many things in life and this is the best of them. Alright, just think about that. He makes stuff suck. Alright, but what do you like? Some people like hardware, they love getting in and pulling shit apart. Right? Oh, I used to do that, I don't like that anymore. Some people like programming, they like Figuring out how it all fits together, writing an algorithm, writing the code, seeing it, you know, it's the machine, but voilà, it works. It's all that sort of stuff. Alright? Second lesson, very, very important. If you're talking about your career and an employer, we want to know why you're interested in IT. Alright? Because you get to my age, there's lots of stuff that suck. And we're like, man, why the hell do you want to go into this area? This, this is like annoying, especially when you have to deal with bugs and crap like that, right? So we want to know why you're interested. You might be into robotics, you might be into programming, AI, something, right? But we really, really want to know. Okay, because it's very, very important for us to know that. Right? Curiosity. It's one of my favourite pictures of curiosity. So, as I said, we have a lot of problems. We need to hunt them down, right? We need people who are going to be curious to hunt them down. The guys at Weta, they tell me, like, they have so much stuff happening. That if someone isn't curious and finds that stuff, stuff goes on for years. No one even notices, right? We're to have 27,000 cores, right? So think about the computer has cores, they have 27,000, lots and lots of machines, right? Stuff goes wrong, they, they sort of like to know why, but it's really, really hard. 
right? So they want somebody who's actually curious and actually going to go and try and figure that stuff out because that's valuable to them because it costs them money when stuff doesn't work, right? And that's what um, companies really want, right? So we want to figure out what's wrong and build solutions, right? So actually go through that process, you know? Investigate, research, analyze, build, deliver. All right, so Mr. Curious George, it's all about being curious. It's very, very important in a career. Fourth is learning. So it's another a couple of other quotes that I like. So by the nature, men are pretty much alike. It's learning and practice that set them apart. Another one, a Chinese proverb. Learning is like rowing upstream, not to advance, it's to drop back. All right, if you ask me whether when I left university the first time, did I ever come back? I would have looked at you and said, never in a million years. All right? Ten years later, almost to the dot, I was back doing an MBA. All right? So it may not be university learning, but you're always going to learn in your job, no matter what you do. There is a guy who talks about careers. He says, if you don't learn something new every three months, or three to six months, you need to change jobs. All right? Because he's talking about that if you don't learn, and they've proven this in, in, in like brain scans and stuff, that your neurons in your brain die if you don't learn new ones. Right? So the stuff that you think you know, think about it, if you don't use that knowledge, you end up losing it. Right? So try and learn new things all the time. So how do you learn? Right, who thinks they know how they learn? Yep. By doing. By doing. Right? So he's saying doing. How many people think they're a doing person? Okay, so we've probably got half the class. How many think people think they learn by visual? They need to see somebody do it. Okay, we've got three. How many people need to hear it? They have to hear someone tell you what to do. No, oh, interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right. Well, some people learn by osmosis, right? I'm sure he's going to get lots of knowledge that way. All right. So there are people that are visual. Okay. Um, I can tell you from business context. Um, I did this website called Smax a few years ago, and I was presenting to Sam Morgan. And for four meetings, we talked, we met, and we talked about it. Talk, 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 talk. And he'd nod, and he'd go, "Yep, cool, I get it, I get it." And then an email would come back a day or two later. No, nah, it's really not working for me. You know, I'm just not quite getting it. And then when I showed him something, I put something in front of him and showed him, he was like, got it. I know what I can do with this. Right? Some people are very visual. And for you guys, it's very important to know how you learn. Because you can sit in a lecture and he might be just, he might write on the board and he just might talk. Blah, 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 blah. And you're like, you know, because you're visual. You want to see somebody do something, right? Very, very important. The next thing is oral. So some people are oral. My wife, she's very oral. She likes to hear stuff. All right? She likes people to tell her. So those type of people like to go to training sessions. They like to actually hear it and go through that process. Right? So some people, some of you, well, none of you are identified to it, which is probably because you're engineers. All right? The third is kinetics, doing. So actually doing. Unfortunately, or fortunately, with engineering and programming and that type of thing, it is kinetic. They make you do lots of code, right? Because you have to do it. You have to actually go through and do the hard work. It's sort of, you can't sort of, it's not like art where you could just go and done. You can't sort of go with the programming and done. You know, while one loop, do a function, it's all in here, close brackets, that's it. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to do the nitty gritty. You have to do it. Right? Uh, for some of you, if you're visual and kinetic, mind maps work really well because actually you're combining visual and the and this whole thing. So if you haven't tried it, I recommend that you do try it because visual cortex and all that sort of stuff actually helps you learn a lot better. Why do I have so many pictures on my slides? Because it's shown to be that you guys will have stronger memory if I actually show you pictures associated to whatever that concept is. Alright? It's a known fact, and it's, the, it's why I show them like this. When I first started doing this, there was lots of bullet points, right? And they say, you know, PowerPoint can kill. 
Right? So I try not to do that. So very, very important to try and figure out how you learn, right?